and welcome to today's Christmas Reflection. The line from Heart the Herald Angels Sing we're going to reflect on today is this, veiled in flesh the God had seen. There's a huge amount wrapped up in just that one short line, so let's break it into three bite-sized trunks and see where it takes us. The first phrase, veiled in flesh, we might say hidden or wrapped in human form. Often when we think about the grace of God, we think about Jesus dying on the cross in our place, which is quite right. But for me as well, another demonstration equally powerful of the grace of God is the fact that Jesus was born as a baby in the first place. He was born at a time when it wasn't safe to be born. The stats for survival of children into adulthood were very poor. There was no modern maternity hospital, no doctors or midwives on hand, no vaccinations or other medical interventions to give the baby the best chance of growing into adulthood. He wasn't even born in his own home. Instead, he was born far away from home to a young mother, her first child. And he was born in that part of a stranger's house where the farm animals were kept at night. The God of all creation, the Lord of hosts, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, born as a tiny, vulnerable human baby in amongst the farm animals. I remember holding my granddaughter in before her, my own children, but when she was only a few days old and thinking how tiny, how vulnerable, how reliant on others she was. And I reflected again on the fact that Jesus' parents, Mary and Joseph, would have had that same experience, felt those same feelings as they held the baby Jesus, just as tiny just as vulnerable. The very act of being born for God to become veiled in human flesh was a very fragile and dangerous thing to do, leaving behind everything he'd known since before creation. God made himself completely vulnerable as a human baby to achieve his plan of salvation. As Stuart Townend puts it, how deep the father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure. And then the central phrase in the line is simply the Godhead. Now this is the word that sums up the essence or substance of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. It expresses the nature and character of God. In short, it includes everything that makes God, God. And the simple truth is that there is so much that we simply don't understand. We can barely scratch the surface of the depth and breadth and height of the grace, the love, the power, the holiness of God, even after many years as followers of Jesus. So if we put these two phrases together, then we get everything that is the awesome, powerful, majestic God wrapped up in a human body. As Paul puts it in Colossians chapter one, Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the God who was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him. Everything that is God, that's everything, wrapped up in the body of a tiny baby, in a toddler learning to walk and talk, as a young boy and then a teenager, as a carpenter earning a living in a small town, a worshipper attending synagogue and going to the temple for all the, for the Passover and all the other major festivals, living with his family, spending time with his friends, this was the image of the invisible God wrapped up in human form and living in his community, working in his neighbourhood. And finally, the word see, veiled in flesh, the Godhead see. So why did Jesus come? Why did God come to us as Jesus? To help answer that, let's look back briefly to the Jewish faith in the time of Jesus. For the Jews, God was holy and separate and unapproachable, different and set apart from the people. The temple in Jerusalem had a space called the Holy of Holies, which is where God was to be found. It was separated from the rest of the temple by a huge curtain, a veil. The only person who could enter that, this Holy of Holies was the high priest, and he could only enter on one day each year. God was so holy that the Jews didn't even mention his name. And in addition to the Ten Commandments and the other Old Testament laws, the Pharisees and scholars would write explanations of the law, initially to try and help stop ordinary people um, from sinning. 
However, as we know from the Gospel accounts, this additional regulation in fact only made it harder for people to approach God. It created more barriers than it did bridges. What a huge contrast if you compare that with the welcome that so many ordinary people received from Jesus. Luke's Gospel is full of accounts of Jesus meeting and eating with tax collectors, with prostitutes, with other people considered undesirable by the religious authorities of the day. And the surprising thing is that although Jesus knew all about their sin and their failure, and although they, although they knew that he knew all about their sin and failure, still they came time and time again. They felt a welcome, they felt safe from the fullness of God in human form. So Jesus didn't come to keep God veiled behind, um, in the temple. He didn't come to keep God locked away behind a wall of religious regulations. On the contrary, Jesus, the image of the invisible God, lived among people like us. In his ministry and in his everyday life, he presented the fullness of God in a way that we can see and understand and relate to. He came so that we might see God. In John chapter 14, there's a conversation between Philip and Jesus where Philip asks, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Jesus reveals to us the fullness of God the Father, making it possible for us to see him. And because he has lived among us, he knows our fears, our temptations and our challenges. We can approach God securely, knowing that he is not a distant God. He's not so far removed from us that he doesn't understand us. On the contrary, the welcome he gave to people on earth, the love and grace he showed, even to the outcast and the sinner, gives us confidence to turn to him now. As Hebrews 4 puts it, We do not have a high priest who is unable to empathise with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Let's pray as we close. Thank you, Father, for revealing yourself in Jesus, that in his life, lived out among us, we see the fullness of God. And yet there is so much more that couldn't be fitted into a human body. Open our eyes so that we can see you more fully and appreciate the enormity of who you are, of your love and your grace. Help us to approach your throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and grace when we need it most. Amen.